Hi, uh, very good evening, everyone, and good morning as well to Alex. Uh, welcome to the UWE BTC info session. Um, well, thank you, uh, Ms. Hajinda, for organizing these uh, virtual sessions for UV. And then thank you all for coming in to, you know, to join this uh, webinar. My name is Phoenix. I'm the country manager for UWE Bristol. And then uh, joining together with me, I have my colleague Miha. Miha, would you like to also like, you know, share? Yeah. So Miha and myself, we both actually based in Malaysia. So in Subang, our office is actually in Subang. So both of us, you know, probably living in the same time zone to get with you. But I do know some of you are actually currently studying in the UK. And it's in the morning in the UK. I hope the weather is, is good in the UK. Yeah. And then we'll also like to welcome Alex, Alex, uh, Alexander Sun, who is the barrister as well as the uh, senior lecturer of the BTC course at UWE Bristol. So he's going to share with you about, you know, the course itself and the applications process um, of the bar course. Now, um, this is a... I mean, we are in the Zoom meeting environment. Now, if you have any questions, you can actually, uh, you know, type the questions in the chat box and we will actually flag to uh, Alex after he presented um, the, 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 the sessions. And then before we call these sessions to an end, I will also share some important information with you, uh, probably just about 10 minutes before uh, the sessions ends, okay? All right, without further ado, I will pass the floor to Alex. Over to you, Alex. Thank you, Phoenix. Good, uh, good evening, everybody. Um, as Phoenix mentioned, my name uh, is Alexander Swain. Uh, I'm a senior lecturer on the bar training course um, at the University of the West of England, uh, Bristol. Um, I specifically teach uh, opinion writing, drafting, uh, professional ethics, um, civil advocacy, um, and I also teach in the options part of the course, uh, immigration law uh, and family law. Um, and alongside that, um, uh, I also practice um, as uh, a barrister uh, in London. Um, so thank you very much for inviting me today. Um, very nice to see how, how well attended it is, um, looking at the number of participants. Um, and thank you very much um, to Phoenix for, for organising this um, uh, and for introducing me as well. So I will give this short talk um, with reference to uh, some slides, which I will bring up now and hopefully you'll all be able to see. Good. So, um, yes, so this is the, um, this is the first slide and uh, the photo you're seeing, um, this is of the uh, the the law and business building at UE, um, which is the um, the specified building um, where all students who join the bar training course this is their centre. So all the lectures uh, a student will um, have on the bar course will be in this um, in this new building, um, which uh, was was built uh, about five years ago which is state of the art. Um, it contains um, all um, the base rooms where you are taught in small group sessions, but it also includes the courtrooms where uh, BTC students um, conduct their mock advocacy in both civil and criminal trials. So one of the benefits of the, the building we have is that you are centered in one building. You're not having to go uh, all over a city or even all over campus when you're being taught throughout the year, uh, you are all in one building. Uh, and that is uh, a photo of the building. Um, why, um, first of all, um, Bristol? Uh, well, um, and, and UE in particular, we are um, a very established university in the West of England. Um, we have on the um, on campus 36,000 students uh, enrolled, and we are very much an international student, uh, an international 
um, uh, uh, establishment with students from over 160 countries. Uh, and we very much have a, a strong uh, contingent, um, including Malaysia as well. Um, Bristol, uh, which you might know about, you might not, is a very vibrant, um, popular city uh, just outside London, an hour and a half on the train from London. It's a very social city, um, which you might be able to enjoy when you're studying. Our, our campus is on the outskirts of Bristol, and it's about a 20 minute bus ride into the centre of Bristol, um, which, as I say, is a, a very interesting um, uh, uh, stu uh, stu city, um, which if you join us, hopefully you would enjoy as well. So moving on from that um, and looking at about Bristol itself, um, as well as just the bar course, um, those are a few um, photos of Bristol. Uh, that's the city of Bristol. And as I say, we are just on the outskirts of it on our own campus. Uh, and there is there just a map uh, of the UK um, showing how, how close Bristol is also to some of the other cities in the UK, you know, which often visit um, when they're not studying during the year. So um, moving on now more specifically to um, the bar training course, um, which you might be interested um, in studying. Um, and this is um, three of the key points of information about the bar training course. It is the postgraduate course which allows you to ultimately practice as a barrister. Um, the uh, course is, with that in mind, very much regulated by the Bar Standards Board, which is the regulatory body for barristers um, uh, in England and Wales. Uh, and as I say, the course is focused on you having the skills, training, experience, qualification to ultimately be and practice uh, as a barrister. And with that in mind, the um, training we provide on the bar training course is very much vocational. And when I say vocational, I mean very practical based, practice based. It is a focus on becoming a barrister. Moving on then to some of the key more key components of the bar training course, they are as The course is um, divided up into um, different subject areas, and there is really two main areas of study um, in criminal uh, law and civil law. Uh, and uh, two um, of the main subjects very much are criminal and civil litigation and evidence. And linked to that as well um, is you uh, 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 studying and training uh, in civil advocacy and criminal advocacy. So actually being before a judge, making submissions in a case for your trial, um, uh, representing one side or the other with an opponent who would be uh, a co-student uh, co and giving you real practical um, uh, experience of being a, in a courtroom environment. And we have a number of um, designated courtrooms which really do look identical to courtrooms in practice in which you are trained in civil advocacy and criminal advocacy. Uh, and there's a reference there to submission uh, and trial advocacy. You're also trained in how to conference with a client um, who uh, you will then represent at trial uh, and, and how you build up rapport with the client, discuss the case, focus on the strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and that in itself, conferencing is a skill which again we uh, focus on and teach on the training course. We also very much um, uh, uh, train um, you in terms of written advocacy, your written skills in terms of advising a client um, uh, as to the merits of a case and also drafting. That is um, uh, providing pleaded documents, which as a barrister, you would prepare for your solicitor to submit in court. So claim forms, particulars of claim, defenses, 
you are trained in the skill of legal drafting. And throughout all of this uh, as well, uh, you are um, taught the standards of ethical professional conduct, and we have a, a, a designated um, uh, subject uh, called professional ethics, where you are um, taught um, the standards of behavior, the standards of practice um, uh, when working as a barrister. Uh, so professional ethics is very much a, um, a subject which we teach as well. So those are the, the, uh, the five main areas um, which are taught uh, on the bar training course. We also provide, um, in addition to the, um, the bar training course and those five key areas, um, uh, an LLM, um, so that um, you will be able not only to have this qualification, um, but in addition to that, a master's qualification, an LLM. Um, and that um, LLM part of the um, study takes place after the BTC has finished. The teaching for the BTC finishes uh, in March and you sit exams in April and May. And then after that, should you wish, you have the option to top up your qualification um, by um, studying a master's and having a master's qualification as a result of that. And the master's qualification consists of uh, you taking two modules um, which are taught over a month, and then um, uh, submitting a 12,000 word dissertation to be submitted in the September of that year. Uh, and the subjects which we taught most commonly are as the options to the, um, uh, to the LLM uh, strand of the, uh, of the course. Um, the options uh, of law, advanced criminal uh, advocacy, um, family law, we run an international trade module uh, and a commercial law module uh, and also a professional negligence module. So you have a range of subjects which you can choose as an option. You must take two, um, which would then build up to you not only qualifying with a BTC, but also a master's. And um, uh, on the slide I've just given you is a breakdown, two taught options, uh, and, and then topped up um, with the research and practice portfolio uh, as part of the LLM. That sort of gives you the, um, the, the objective information about what um, the BTC is like. What is it in terms of content? What is it like day to day, the reality of being on the bar professional training course. Naturally, because of the subject, um, it is an intense course. Students have to be fully committed to it in order to successfully pass. Um, but it is a very rewarding course. You're, you're taught a, ver a wide variety of subjects um, by a, a wide variety of tutors. Some of the subjects are more learning based books and, and, and making sure your knowledge of lit litigation and evidence um, is of the appropriate level. But there is also very much a practical element of the course in terms of, as I mentioned, advocacy, presenting cases before a judge, liaising with a client, building a relationship with a client in terms of a conference setting. So it really is a, a mix between practical um, and knowledge based areas. Uh, and those subjects are taught not in a in a lecture hall of you know 300 students, but but in quite a, um, a, a tailored way where you will be part of one group of a maximum of 18 students. So the learning is, as I say, personalised and tailored, um, uh, and you will get certainly a very um, uh, 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 close. Um, level of teaching uh, within your group. Um, it, it's not as I say depersonalized, it's group based as opposed to main hall lecture based. So taught in groups of 6, 12 uh, or 18 um, uh, as referred to on the slide uh, at the bottom. Uh, a bit more information there about why, why Bristol uh, as opposed to some of the other um, institutions which provide the BTC. Um, 
we provide a very strong level of support to our students, not only pastorally, each student will have their own tutor who they can go to if there are any personal matters they need to discuss. But as I say, the, the level of teaching is tailored, it is personalised, um, and you develop over the year quite a strong relationship with, with the people who are teaching you, given the frequency uh, of how often you see them, and also as I say, that small group session um, environment, um, which certainly helps you build up knowledge and confidence in, in the areas you are studying. We also um, provide a number of extracurricular um, uh, 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 aspects to the course. We have mooting, which is debating competitions uh, and adv advocacy competitions. Uh, and we also have a very strong um, link to um, uh, the bar, the actual practicing bar in England and Wales. Uh, members of the bar uh, who are practicing barristers come to speak to students uh, and, and students find that quite helpful to have that, um, that appreciation from people in practice um, uh, from Bristol or from beyond to, to give um, uh, talks uh, about their experience practicing in the bar and ways in which one can successfully secure a pupillage in order to ultimately practice uh, after completion of the BTC. So those are just some of the other points in that slide. Um, which I think distinguish perhaps us um, uh, uh, as, uh, 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 as a course provider. What are the entry requirements um, to join the BTC? Um, they're listed there. Um, obviously, fluency in English um, is uh, a prerequisite, um, and there's a requirement for a Yelts um, uh, score to be satisfied, um, 7.5. Um, a degree of a minimum of 2-2 two, two, um, and membership of an inn of court. Um, in England and Wales, the barristers, each barrister in practice um, is a member of an inn um, uh, and it is a requirement for training barristers to also be a member of an inn. Um, the inn is um, a, uh, a body, um, there are four of them in London, where you can, they have libraries, they even have um, some residential facilities, they have dining facilities. Um, and it is a very strong tradition that barristers have to be not only with their own chambers, um, but also as part of an inn to be part of the bar, to be a barrister. A and that applies to trainee barristers and students as well. Um, so there is a requirement to also be a member of an inn uh, as well as having those academic uh, qualifications. And ju just to clarify that <laughs> idea of an inn, you might have heard a few of them uh, uh, in, in reading. Four inns, main inns in London, uh, Gray's Inn, Inner Temple, um, Middle Temple and Lincoln's Inn. Um, a lot of students from uh, Malaysia um, join Lincoln's Inn and there's quite a strong tradition there um, so if you would like to uh, join us you have to join an inn um, you might have heard of Lincoln's Inn already. Moving on so those are the the academic requirements to, to join the course how much does it cost? Um, th those are the, um, the fees we are um one of actually the um the, the cheaper um course providers we've always tried to keep our fees as reasonable as possible we are aware obviously you're starting out as um as trainee barristers and um we're conscious of that and we have tried to um as i say keep our fees um as reasonable as possible um, 13 and a half for the BTC and, and, and uh, 15 and a half if you wanted to take the LLM option. Um, not that it detracts in any way from the quality of our teaching, um, but we are, we, we've really, really tried to, 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 as I say, be reasonable with the fees and compared to quite a lot of other institutions, they are in fact lower. Um, yes, so that is, as I say, for both our option and if you wanted to take 
um, the master's portion. This is just a um, uh, caption from, from, a, from a, a student who, who joined us a few years ago uh, about why he so much enjoyed being on the bar course uh, at Bristol. And I think that is quite a fair encapsulation of what it's like as a student. Um, you are trained in a number of different skills, um, uh, whether that be, uh, say, the knowledge-based subjects like civil and criminal litigation, or the more practical based skills such as advocacy and conferencing skills and we really do see students developing um, throughout the year those skills and and as the student here has said um, it really does prove crucial um, for your career um, ongoing in practice we are a very supportive co um, department we realize that at the beginning, you've had experience as a barrister. Um, we very much appreciate that and we support you in your development. It is um, a relatively steep learning curve in terms of the amount you have to learn um, over the year, but, but we have an emphasis very much on supporting you um, and encouraging you and helping you develop. Um, and I think that is also there um, in, in the summary from the student as well. And, and that is very much an ethos, um, which is important to us at UE, um, the supportive environment we provide for students um, throughout um, their training. These are some of the quotes <laughs> we, we obtained from, from students last year um, about the course. And I think they are actually quite representative. Um, uh, we, we really do, uh, you know, throughout the year, look at the student's development very carefully. We have mock assessments uh, before, the, um, before the prior assessment, uh, and we give feedback really very regularly, quite detailed feedback to students about how they are developing. Um, and the comment there about the, the feedback we provide, that is something students appreciate. We give formal and informal feedback written uh, and in class. Uh, and I think that sort of concentration of, of um, the, the, uh, the time we give to seeing how students are developing, again, is very much a feature of, of the course. And, and, and then the reference to feedback there, I think, is um, is, is particularly relevant. Students do enjoy it. They, 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 they really like the feeling of doing something different, not quite so um, black letter law based as previously where you have studied law with books, a more practical um, emphasis in some subjects. Um, they, they, they enjoy it. Um, hard work, definitely, but that's not to say it's not a stimulating um, year um, and the variety certainly is appreciated in what we taught. Um, best year of my life, one student said, um, and uh, work, 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 that, that is certainly true. Um, but a lot of opportunity for you to, uh, if studying uh, at UWE um, in terms of, of, of learning, getting to know people, um, we have uh, a, a number of um, students from different countries. So it's a very nice mix of students um, throughout, um, throughout the world. And because of the small group session where you are in one group with 18 students throughout the year, um, it's to in terms of the relationship that their tutor, but, but also the social relationships and working relationships they develop with their co-students as well. Um, you're not with different students every week, you're not with different tutors every week. Um, uh, and in my opinion, I think that helps teaching. I think it helps learning. So yes, uh, a few comments there about from the, from the student's point of view. Uh, accommodation provided uh, as, uh, as a BTC student, that can be on campus uh, where the, the, the law building is, uh, or, or also um, alternatively nearby campus in student accommodation. 
So that is provided as well. Um, and some of the information about the type of accommodation uh, is there. The accommodation, I have to say, is quite nice. <laughs> um, uh, but there are some photos there as well uh, about where you live when you're not studying. Yes, uh, and that is a, um, a picture of Bristol to end with. Um, looks like in the, in the spring. Um, so that is a an overview of of, of the bar course. Um, I will um, be there next year. Um, uh, so I hope possibly if you've been interested in what I've said today about who um, we do, um, our attitude to learning, our attitude to teaching, um, if that's been of interest to you, then um, maybe, hopefully, I will see some of you next year as well. Um, we have time for some questions as well. Um, and, and Phoenix um, uh, will have some further information to give you also. Um, so, Phoenix, is there anything arising from that you would like me to, to give a bit more information about? Or um, shall I leave it to the students now to? to ask me. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Alex, uh, for sharing the PTC course uh, overview with us as well as the students. That's really helpful. Um, right. Uh, students, if you have any questions for Alex, please feel free to ask. Uh, you can on your mic. You can actually type in a chat box. I, I actually received a, a message, a question uh, regarding the IELTS, whether uh, students actually do require us to actually have IELTS. And um, Alex, would you like to pick these questions or I, yes, I should the, answer? That, that requirement, the, the, the IELTS is a requirement, yes. Yes. Um, yeah, so we require students to have IELTS 7.5 unless they are the UWE LLB uh, graduates with second upper. Uh, yeah. Other than that, basically, uh, most of the students will have to actually sit for IELTS. And then um, that's the reason for this is because uh, as far as I know, our BTC course, we want our students to succeed in the course and be able to cope with the course. So on that basis, um, we want the students um, to have the IELTS 7.5 and not struggle uh, with the, you know, coping exactly. course. Yes, that's the reason. We, we also actually, um, th that is a re the requirement because obviously we're, we're dealing with quite technical English. Um, but, but uh, once that's, you know, what student is on the course anyway, we actually also do provide um, English language um, for students who, even if they obviously have, they would have to, you know, satisfy the English language requirements. We have workshops for those students who perhaps are still maybe struggling a little bit with the the, the legalese, the, 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 the very specific technical language in English, which is being used in some of the sessions. Um, and, and the students like that. They, we, we get quite a good take up on that. Um, and I've, I've definitely seen when the students who have at the beginning, perhaps they need a little bit of refinement with, with the English, when they take those subjects, it helps them. Right. Yep, thank you. Thank you, Alex. Okay, I think um, the students will also join some dining sessions in. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, yes. And, uh, yeah. How many sessions will they be joining, Alex? They have to have 12 qualifying sessions with their in. So when you join the in, um, you then and you finish the bar training course, you are then called to the bar via your in. In order to be called to the bar via your in, you have to um, sit 12 sessions, 12 qualifying sessions. Um, most of those are made up by going to dinner um, at your in, where you meet some of the senior barristers at the in, you meet some of your co-students, um, but also some of the sessions are more 
training based where you will attend a couple of days where you also have barrister training um, with some of the tutors at your inn. So there'll be some advocacy sessions with um, the tutors from your inn, which will also constitute qualifying sessions. So you have to have 12 almost qualifying points in order to, um, to be called to the bar and then be a barrister. Um, but the, the, the training with the inn is, it is, as I say, over a couple of days throughout the year, it is absolutely in no way um, anything like the training you BTC. It is almost like a little companion to it, um, uh, but it's something you have to do with your inn. Right, right. Some of the students, uh, the previous uh, alumni actually share with us, uh, one of the advantage of them actually chose UV for the BTC course, besides you know, the high quality teachings and pastoral cares and all that, they've been sharing with us that um, they can actually make a day trip to London to attend this in dining in yeah. session. Literally, I mean, we have, it is important actually, how, um, accessible Bristol is. I mean, we have the Bristol train station literally on our doorstep at campus. And now it is, it, it, it's, it's just over now. I think it's an hour, hour and 20 minutes, if that, on the train to London, um, straight in. So, you know, students often at a weekend, if they're not too, they haven't got too much work to London for the weekend. Um, to visit, um, but also more um, specifically for the training that needs to be done with the inn in London, it's it's fine. They, they, you know, it's easily accessible. Right. Well, that's that's a good news because uh, you know, put up nights in London's hotel seems to be oh, really yeah. expensive. No, no. I mean, some some literally do do it come do it in the day, come back. Yeah, the bus is uh, the bus fare is, is quite reasonable. Yes, and the travel, people yeah. take buses. There's there's something called mega bus, which is very popular. Um, but also, I mean, you can pre-book train tickets as well, which, which is always much more economical. Um, so, I mean, yeah, practically that actually do, is very helpful for them. Okay, right. That's that's good. Right. I I still have a few. Uh, perhaps a few slides to show to students before they yeah. actually go and join their class. Um, so I'm just wondering uh, whether, uh, Alex, could you actually stop sharing screens? And then in the meantime, if you have more questions for Alex, please, please actually, you know, uh, type in the chat box or just on your mind and ask. That's, I'll just stop sharing, yep. Right. Okay, just a second. Okay. I won't take you long. Um, okay, just a few things. A right. So you see my screen. So um, I just pick randomly pick a few alumni of from our law school, and then some of them they actually did their BVC course or the BPTC or the LLM or even uh, the LLB with UWE. So I guess that some of you may be able to recognize them. Yes, no? Yeah? Um, like that's uh, DV. Uh, Drew DV, one of the, he runs his own chamber. Very, very uh, popular. And then Joanna uh, Henley Rampus uh, from Warisan. She's in the politic uh, coalitions in Sabah. And that's Pat Felix. Felix also, um, he runs his own chamber and also re representing some of the very high profile uh, officials in the country uh, for their court case. And that's uh, Ravin. And of course, at the right hand side, we have the YB, uh, Tony Ching, who joined uh, UV for the LLB uh, programs years ago. So what I'm trying to say is that um, uh, UW Bristol, you probably have not heard or you know, you may or you may not hurt, but however, um, as a law education provider, um, it has been close to 50 years. 
So um, the universities and previously as a polytechnic has been training barristers, solicitors, and offer all kinds of uh, law programs in the past. And um, they are just this you see on the screen are just, you know, some of our, our alumni and there are many more others as well. Okay. All right. Um, Alex has actually shared with you the tuition fees. Our tuition fees, as you've seen on the screen, okay, it's really, really uh, reasonable, um, competitive, reasonable for a course running in such intensive at the master's levels. Um, I know the students actually told me they have been like attending from nine o'clock to four o'clock kind of classes every day, Monday to Thursday, I guess. Yeah. yeah. So it's, yeah. We, we, give, we give them Friday off. Friday off. Okay. So full days, full time course, nine to four o'clock. Okay. Just to train you like a future barrister. That's how we can see the transformations of the students when before they join and after they join. They are ever ready. They just dress like, you know, Alex, ever ready in a court every day. <laughs> attending the class that's that's how yeah and then um as you can see from the screen that's the living cost and uh you know your parents will actually want to know uh the the total cost of this okay and then um that's the estimation of the uh tuition fees plus living cost okay of course the living cost will be varies from person to persons as well Okay, this is just an estimation, all right? And if you can actually choose to join the LLM, you can also choose to join the PGD. So the only difference would be one is nine months and the other one is actually 12 months, but both are actually will qualify you to practice as a barrister, as a lawyer in Malaysia, okay? But you must actually pass a nine months program. So Alex, you must actually teach them and making sure they actually pass. <laughs> All right. Agreed. Agreed. Well, our passing rate is very high. I I was actually reading one of the reports and of like 90 international students and 84 of them actually uh, pass. And that considered a very, very high passing rate. Yeah. No, no. We um, the, the students work hard. They do. Um we all we all work hard, you know, the, the tutors and the students, you know, in, in order to to make sure they get through. Yeah, because it's a very tough program, it's very challenging, but if this, you know, work hard, so as yeah. you know, the pastoral cares and day in and day out, I'm sure they will be able to make it. Yeah. 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 Okay. And also we have some scholarships information for y'all, for all of you who are from uh, Brickfield Asia College, as long as you actually meet the entry requirements. Um, so we will actually grant the students a 1,000 pounds of uh, scholarships, which will deduct from your total tuition fees. Okay. And then uh, we also have uh, some BTC scholarships to be given away, but a, we will actually invite all the BTC holders to come in to join a scholarships interview. Okay, so uh, we will send out this in you know these invitations to students. Sometimes maybe in in the month of like March, uh, once you actually have your application comes in. So if you feel like you want to give it a try, yeah, please actually register uh, to join the scholarships interview. It's very simple. You just need to actually fill in the form, uh, you know, give a bit of uh, legal aspirations, what you plan to do as a UWE student's ambassadors, and then you will be, be invited to join for the uh, BTC scholarships interview, okay? So we have a few prices, uh, as in like in the form of scholarships, the highest will be a reduction of a 5,000 pounds from your tuition fees. Then the second, uh, the runner up would be a, I think three thousands, and then there are a few places uh, for two thousands. Okay, and then these scholarships will be overriding, as in like you will receive one scholarship from UWE, whichever is the highest amount. So you can't actually stack up. Okay, just to make it clear, so you can't actually get 
1,000, 2,000, 3,000 and make your, your tuition fees free from UV, you know, you can't. But you can actually, um, you know, get the highest possible scholarships from UV. And then if, uh, you know, you are one of the UWE LLB um, alumni, uh, we really, really, uh, you know, if the privilege to our alumni, they get a 25% alumni scholarships, okay? Right, now, Besides this also, we also have a video competition scholarships. Again, it's actually 5,000 pounds. Um, you can actually inquire for the in information on the competitions with us after these sessions. So in terms of the entry requirement, um, well, we require students to have at least a second lower class of their LLB program, okay? And it must be a UK uh, LLB Okay, and then as for English, we accept IELTS and it has to be 7.5 overall, okay, and uh, all PTE 73 overall, okay. So it's very high uh, requirements and I'm aware of that. Um, however, last year, um, out of like 45 students who actually like presenting their English reports, only two of them did not actually meet the English uh, requirements. So that says to me, it is achievable. And most of them who has got like, you know, uh, LLB second lower, they, 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 they have no problems as well, okay? So if if you are, uh, you know, LL, you think that you will actually get a LLB second upper, that's definitely not a problem. So it's just a matter of actually attending the IELTS or the PTE. And we also can accept the joint reports as well. As in like, you know, if your first attempt, you get a, you know, 7.0, but the second attempt, you actually get a 7.5. However, some of the components is actually uh, 7.0 and, you know, uh, and varies, we can actually look into that uh, as a case by case. But the bottom line is uh, the overall in one of these report must be uh, 7.5 or PD 73, okay? Right. Also, you need to uh, register as a member of one of the INS of court, which uh, Alex has uh, explained to you earlier on. Yeah, there are four INS of court uh, Alex, yeah, is that correct? Four, yes, four. Yes, yes, you can actually uh, apply as uh, one of the, with one of the in of court. I think with the Malaysian students, they are very, the Lincoln Inn will be very popular. Uh, yeah, it, it always is. Um, I, I, I don't know exactly why, but it, it is always, it always, always is popular with, with, with the Malaysian cohort, yeah. Okay, right. So yeah, there's no, uh, as in like, you can actually join one of those things that there's no specifically that you need no, to not at all. the Lincoln no, no. or the middle or, you know, no, the no. Gray or what. No. no, I mean, some some are, I mean, I'm with Gray's Inn, which is a smaller inn. Um, Lincoln's Inn is, is slightly bigger, um, but I mean, I just, I joined Gray's Inn because um, I knew somebody there, you know, and, and, and I, I visited there and, you know, I was training as a as a barrister, and that was it. You know, it, there's no um, there's no stringent requirements as long as you're studying on the bar course, whichever one you prefer, really. Right. All right. Thank you. But with the conditions, you must be one of the members of this ins of court, or else That's you it. can actually uh, you know, pursue the court, the yeah. the BTC program. So please actually do it, uh, preferably you know, before May, because the INS as well also takes time to process your yeah. in membership application. So you, there are a few conditions that you need to actually meet um, before you apply for visa and all that. So therefore, uh, do it as soon as possible, if ever can, okay? And then in the applications, in the UV uh, applications, um, you will, there will be a set of questions will be asked and one of which will be, uh, you know, uh, the potential to fulfill the BSB uh, statements of competence 
and then the you know commitment to the career in the bar as well as your legal uh, records of legal experience or other related activities which they will actually post and ask you in the uh, online application form okay right um the applications basically is very simple. Um, it's on our UWE uh, BTC website. Okay, you can actually like you know screenshots this and then uh, to look through our website on that course itself at the entry requirements button or the tab. You just click on that and scroll to the bottom. That's apply. Okay, that's how simple it is. I actually put a test case in and it took me uh, an hour or so, yeah, to, to complete the application. So it's not uh, that complicated. Okay, now uh, a few more announcements. Okay, we have some upcoming webinar. Okay, just in case you are also interesting, interested to know uh, how to get a job in the UK after your BTC programs, you can actually like join our webinars, um, which is on the 21st of February, okay? Because when you complete the PGD or the LLM, apparently you can still apply to stay on in the UK uh, on the graduate route. You can stay on for another year or two years. Uh, to work, to find jobs and things like that. So maybe perhaps uh, that by that time, this will be, become very useful for you. Okay. That, 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 that scheme, if I could just, has been very useful. Um, yes. You know, there are some students from last year who are, there are some very interesting positions in London um, uh, by virtue of that scheme. Right. So if when they actually complete the PGD nine months program or the LRM, they can actually apply for the graduate routes and then search for, uh, you know, uh, legal work yeah. or part-time work in the meantime to, yeah. you know, make your means while searching for a more permanent uh, yeah. legal work. It, it's, a it's a really positive um, introduction, that scheme. Right. I agree with you. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so um, just in case you have a lot more questions and you like to have a sessions with us, you know, chat with myself, with Miha, with no strangers, just us, a few of us in the office, we're happy to actually meet you virtually in Zoom, like in an environment like this, and then uh, to go through uh, any inquiries with you. Okay, All right. That's our contact. And yeah, that's all. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Let me just look at the chat box. Oh, someone is actually asking me to flip back to the living cost page. Okay. All right. Let's see. So the living cost page. Okay. That's the estimation um, for the accommodations as well as a, the living cost. Now, obviously, the living cost has actually uh, increased in the UK. Um, so you probably have to actually project at least like 400 a month um, on your food, uh, groceries and stuff like that. Okay, besides your accommodations, okay, per month. All right. Um, Alex, would you like to add anything because you live in the UK? in bristol um no i th i think those are those are realistic figures i i think 400 a month is realistic okay right thank you and we, we have we have the student um shop and um stu that's a realistic figure okay thank you alex Right. Uh, Hajinda, would you, uh, do you have any information you'd like to share with our students or us, Alex? Um, I, I'm quite okay, actually, Felix. Alex has done a wonderful job. Um, yeah, I think it's well done, well done. Just that, um, let's hope that the students uh, start applying quickly. They will need to fill up a, a BSc engagement form if they're applying yes. to us, so they can always um, contact me. All right. So, yeah, thank you very much. Okay. Right. Um, thank you, Hajinda, for having us. And I must say that this course is very, very popular. 
Um, so from Malaysia, averagely, um, we are taking probably just about like 30 students. Okay, um, at the max, it's about like 40 students. So places are really, really limited. So do put in your applications as soon as possible. Okay, and uh, yeah, and there are many more, how to say, there are several conditions that you still need to meet. For example, the IELTS, the insert courts, memberships, and besides, you also need to sit for your exams, your LB exams, then subsequently pay for the tuition fees deposit visa application and so on. So please actually do not delay on things, do it at the right pace. Okay, and then you will be there in September. And also, I, I need to actually remind students that uh, Bristol is such a wonderful city. It's not just for the students, but it also attracts so many other people to go there for work. Therefore, um, the accommodations are highly, highly uh, in demand. So you need to actually apply for the course and get an offer and then apply for the on-campus or university managed accommodations as soon as possible. And usually uh, the accommodations applications will start in like middle of March. Um, so therefore, uh, please actually apply for the course first and just so that you can actually be invited to apply for the accommodations when it's open. But you don't need to actually pay for the deposit you know, anytime now, but doing the right thing, leading to that, you know, applications and transfer process is very important. Okay. All right. Okay. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, so if you have any other questions, you know, want to have a chat with us, um, you can actually chat with us by email or by, you know, WhatsApping and things like that uh, to contact us. Okay. So thank you so much, uh, Hajinda, for uh, having us. And thank you, Alex, thank as you well. So and thank you, students, for coming into today's webinars. And thank uh, you. yeah, have a good Thanks, day. Alex. Nice meeting Pleasure. you all. Bye. Yes. Take care. Thank you, everyone. And have a good evening. Bye. Thank you. All right.